Hi, this is Natalie Hoffman of FlyingFreeNow.com, and you're listening to the Flying Free Podcast, a support resource for women of faith looking for hope and healing from hidden emotional and spiritual abuse. Welcome to episode 61 of the Flying Free Podcast. Today, I have with me a longtime member of the Flying Free Sisterhood. Her name is Lisa Neal. She is the owner. She's a survivor, but she's also the owner of River Ledge. Did I say that right? River Ledge? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> it is a river ledge farm. It is an absolutely, I saw a, um, she has a website. Is it, so what's the URL? Cause people have to go look at this. Yes. It's river ledge farm, vt.com vt for Vermont. Okay. I, she told me about that. She had this farm and she does, you know, they, they host weddings and other little mini conferences and retreats and things here. And I went and looked at the website and I thought, Oh my word, this woman lives in paradise. It is absolutely gorgeous. So you have to go check it out and look at it. But we're, we get to hear, I'm super excited about this interview because we get to hear about, she, she has a very unique situation where she was married for 28 years to a wonderful man. And then he passed away and she ended up marrying someone who was not so wonderful and, and was in a very abusive relationship. And this is her story of how she got out and what she's doing today to reach back into the pit and help other women. So Lisa, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Natalie. I was so excited when you invited me to come on. So I'm excited. <laughs> this is going to be it. a great interview. Okay. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what set this up for us? Tell us a little bit about your first husband, what happened, and then how did you meet your, um, your second husband? Yes. Yes. Um, I met my first husband, late husband, when I was 14. We dated five years. I married him when I was 19. We were married for 23, but I say we were together for 28 because we were. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And um, it was a healthy relationship. It was definitely not abusive. Um, No marriage is perfect. No relationship is perfect. So I don't want people to get the wrong idea, but Um, He loved the Lord. I loved the Lord. And we both brought uh, some wonderful things to the marriage. And uh, when he uh, got ill, uh, the Lord gave him 10 weeks. It literally was a story where one day you're fine. And the next day you're told prepare because you got three months to live. It was that dramatic. But um, I remember you know, so there was nothing left unsaid when he did pass away. But one of the things was um, that he was so grateful that we raised each other. And also he says, you know, God put us together like we were perfect for each other, you know. And he he also asked me to write his story, our story, because um, the Lord did so much and which he does for all of us that you know, he just does. God is for us, not against us. And uh, so I have his uh, story, our story in a manuscript form. And uh, I am ready to do whatever the next step is, but I'm waiting for the green light from, from the Lord. Cause I want to make sure that what I do is, is God ordained and God driven and not, well, I just think I need to do this. So um, anyway, so I met my second husband, which was the abusive relationship in the church that I attended for over 30 years. And um, uh, he swept me off my feet and uh, there were lots of red flags and we don't need to get into that a whole bunch because of lack of time, but um, he was definitely too good to be true. Um, He mimicked, he was like a mirror to, to me. And um, he, he uh, for some reason when we are, um, um, vulnerable. And I say I had a big S on my forehead for sucker. Um, he, he had evidently really good vision and saw sucker and, and he took advantage of it. So, and I look back and I, I understand what happened. I also have that written down, but, uh, we'll see, we'll see where that goes because I, I documented uh, a lot of those things. Um, I married him within five months. He came in real strong, you know, hot and heavy. And, um, it was, uh, it was really wonderful for about the first year. Uh, it really was that I remember. Uh, my kids weren't so happy. Uh, my daughter, uh, both the kids were out of the house uh, when their father died. Well, actually, my son was a senior in high school, and then he went to college. But um, my daughter had really bad vibes from him uh, right from the beginning. And she is, she's an amazing 
she's an amazing girl, but she um, uh, tried to warn me. I also had the ex-wife, because I, I come from a small town, uh, warn me. And I, I said, listen, he's saved. You know, there's no way that he's abusive. You know, you're, you cheated on him, blah, blah, blah. Cause he, you know, he told me this huge story, but anyway, which I now know is not true. Um, so we were married for six years, but from year two to four, it progressively got worse. And then years four to six, we were physically separated. And I put, uh, a lot of, effort and time and uh, energy into getting him help. You know, does this sound familiar? Getting him help. Mm -hmm. And um, I went through the church and went to Christian counselor and man, was that wrong. Um, The church was, and I, and I want to read a couple things, but the church was the least safe place for me to leave an abusive marriage. And the um, uh, the counselor that we went to that was supposedly Christian, and he might be, um, but he also, I found out after the fact that he was an abuser. So it was, you know, again, it's, it's like a, a lifetime movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not a Hallmark, it's a lifetime movie. Yeah. So uh, anyways, um, uh, so we got remarried and I tried to put my family back together because, you know, I, I was always taught the highest calling was to be married and have children. Um, says who I, honestly says who I'm single now and, and, um, I'm, I'm loving it and I'm not dating. That's, that's my choice. But, um, anyway, so, uh, let me, I want to read a couple things. So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, uh, when I left him, um, I sent him this, this, um, this letter and, and let me, let me just back up. Um, all the stories that I hear on the flying sisterhood and by the way, Natalie, when I finally left my second husband physically separated from him, your, uh, ministry, your, um, um, you know, uh, whatever we learn with you was a life saver. I was so traumatized. I cannot, I could hardly get out of bed and, um, you don't know me, but that is definitely not my, you know, I'm, I have a lot of energy. The glasses always have full rose colored glasses, blah, blah, blah. And it was, it was the worst time of my life. Um, uh, even it was even worse than my late husband passing away that it was worse than that emotionally, mentally, uh, spiritually, it really came, I came to the end of my rope. Cause I, I couldn't, I didn't want to serve a God if that's how God was that, that I had to stay married and that I had to stay in this, uh, in this, uh, terrible situation. So, uh, um, and, and Natalie, keep me on track track here because I get I get excited and I have a lot I want to share and I know our time is limited nope you're doing great um okay so I, I'm it, some of this is a little bit dramatic and I, and I just want to tell you this is my story so you know take it or leave it but this is what happened to me and this was near the end so um when I finally, first of all, I tried to defend him for years, literally, because I knew that I wasn't allowed to get divorced because I really thought God was going to curse me. I was told that God was going to curse me. Um, and so when uh, even the physical separation, I was told I needed to stay separated until he died or I died. And, you know, it, which, which I know is that's not true either. Mm-hmm. But let, let me let me get back to this. I'm going to read you the letter that I wrote him before. Um, well, actually, we'd already physically separated for the last time. I went back to him more than a dozen times. Uh, I went back over and over and over again because he would cry. He would beg me to come back. He'd send me flowers. Um, I remember times that after physical altercations, he would literally get on his knees and hold my knees and weep and say, I'm sorry, don't tell anybody. I'm sick. I need help. You know, all those things. Um, but it was just, it was play acting. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, um, anyway, so let me, let me read this story and then maybe I can get, um, you know, get, okay. So I'm, I'm not going to name him just because I'm not going to at this time. I mean, yeah. it's a small town, you know, every, every, if you lived here, you'd know who it was. So it says here, so-and-so. 
I've been up front with you since this situation transpired. You know why I'm filing for divorce. I've not involved the authorities in what transpired between us on the dates in October 2017 through January 2018 documented. Documentation, ladies, is our friends, <laughs> is our friend, is our friend. Amen. Um, and th- now remember, this was written a couple years ago. This is in 2016. I still have love for you, um, and, and I don't. I love him as my enemy. I want to make that really clear. I am not in love with this man anymore. Um, I was in love with an imposter. And Natalie, you and I, I didn't know we weren't recording. <laughs> but, but one of the things that the Lord put on my heart was that um, when you know, I married an imposter the second time around, and with money, with a dollar bill, when you go to the FBI and you are trained to spot fake money, um, they don't give you fake money to study. You study the real thing. And so that when the imposter comes, the imposter money, you can pick up on it immediately. My first time uh, in marriage, I married the real thing. He really loved the Lord. Uh, the second time I married an imposter that was really, really gifted at uh, uh, quoting scripture and I got saved and I love the Lord. And he used to love to tell me that I was to be subservient to him. And uh, a couple of the things that I was um, uh, counseled to do before we got married and during the marriage was that because he's the head of the house, um, I needed to let him take control of finances, take control of everything. Uh, an example was I was in the choir for many years in my church. I, I attended for over 30 years. And it's a former church now. I don't attend. I don't attend. I, I just, I, I will, I refuse to, and I'll tell you about that later. But um, uh, I was in the choir for many years, and um, he told me he didn't want me there because he was afraid that the, the uh, guy that directed it was going to come on to me. <laughs> And so I asked the pastor um, what I should do. And I was told that I needed to listen to my husband. So if I have a question, I have a question Uh about this. So in your first marriage, you were, were you at that church in your first marriage as well? Okay. So that church was like great for you when you were in a healthy marriage. So it only was like a bad situation when you were in a bad marriage. I I really want to bring that out for the listeners because a lot of people think that, oh, well, our church is great, but churches are great when everything is going great. What, What makes a church really great is when they can come in and love people, even when things aren't going great. And rather than judging and, um, you know, being, so, okay. So I have a question for you though. In your first marriage, was there this expectation that you would be, you know, subservient and that he would control everything? What was your... No, that, and, and, you know, I need to back up. I was, I'm a missionary's kid and a preacher's daughter in a very conservative, non-denominational religion, okay? Because there's a lot of religion out there. And um, no, my, my late husband... He went. He was abused as a child. Actually, both of my husbands were. Uh, it's really interesting, but he never laid a hand on me. And um, he uh, he was unique because he wanted me. I had a lot of. I was raised that I'm a female. I am less than. I am to be quiet. I am to be. Um, uh, the man is, you know, is always right. And if he's not, don't follow him. But you, but if you're married, you got to stay there. Um, I was. Um, because I didn't have the male equipment, I was less than. And so my husband, my first husband, Joe, um, really, and I look back over this because we had a, he had a machine shop, we had a machine shop and, and he would come to me for advice. And I just found that fascinating that he respected me enough to come to me for advice. And um, for example, I, I was a registered nurse and, and, you know, very confident. I mean, God's given me skills, gifts, and abilities as he gives us all he does, but he would, he wanted me to grow myself to, to be a better version of myself. Um, he, you know, he told me that I was, I needed some counseling and I was like, no, I don't because, you know, I was so steeped in that tradition, the tradition of men that I thought I was more spiritual than him. This, and I'm telling on myself because he was abused and he overcame so much, but he also made some bad decisions along the way as we all do. But I was the 
good girl. You know, it, it makes me sick. And I could vomit now because God showed me, like opened my eyes. But he actually was closer to God than I was. And I didn't, I didn't get those things until after he died and I, you know, got remarried. But, but Natalie, when I became a widow, the church just, um, I mean, they were right there. And, oh, everybody was so, oh, Lisa, Lisa. And I got to tell you, when I sounded the alarm on what was going on behind the closed doors of my home, I got nothing. And and I, I actually have had a meeting with the pastor and, and he can't hear me. I know he can't hear me. I at least met because the Lord put that on my heart. I shared my story, but they can't hear. It's like they're blind and they're deaf and it's okay. I, I, I followed the Lord's leading. What they do with that information is on them. But I was bleeding in a ditch, literally. And I was, I was in a very dark place. I had CPTSD. Now I know this. I was, I know that because I had a lot of therapy. Um, and I was self-medicating and it was ugly. And when I, when I went and asked for help and said, something's wrong, help me. I got nothing. What I got is the, remember the, the good Samaritan and, you know, or the, you know, the one that's in the ditch, I, my mind just went blank, yep. but they stepped over me and said, we'll pray for you. Or they, I don't have time. I gotta go. I gotta go help these other people. Mm-hmm. And they forgot their first love. That's, and that's what I, the, the modern day church, and I'm talking with the little C has forgotten Jesus, who is their first love. And their whole thing was about, um, keeping the marriage together, no matter the cost, the institution, but the person, you know, they could just, it didn't matter. They could just die, you know, and it was, it was because you're suffering. And I heard that too. You're suffering. You made a vow before God. You may not cancel it because you're suffering for God, but, and I'm, I'm going to just tell you something graphic. So if this triggers somebody, please, you know, turn it off. But just, but just give me a minute here. Um, my, uh, ex-husband, the second guy, um, he never punched me with a fist. And he used to say, that's not abuse, but he slapped, kicked, bit, pushed, shoved. And the worst thing that he would do is he would grab me by the ears and he would shake me violently and he would scream obscenities in my face. And I used to have blood that used to come down af- after these, after these episodes and uh, my therapist at the time, because I got out of the, the one therapist was really bad, really bad. I found out later he um, abused his wife and ended up in jail and, and divulged that to my ex, but not to me. And they ganged up on me. It was it was horrendous. But again, God helped me. Anyways, um, my therapist, from what I recall, either she or the Holy Spirit, I don't remember specifically, but he was going to eventually break my neck. Uh, that was coming because he was a bodybuilder, very large man. And she, I'm pretty sure she said this during a session, but I, I'm not 100% sure because I want to make sure I get my story straight. Um, but she said, you are either, he's going to break your neck and you're either going to, your kids are going to bury you by their dad or you're going to be in a vegetative state or paralyzed and you get to be in a nursing home and your kids can see you in that condition. Is that the legacy you think the Lord wants for you? And after those words were spoken, I still stayed three more months. I mean, that's, that's that brainwashing the, cause I, I thought I loved him, but I, I, the person I loved was never there. He was, it wasn't real. It, he wasn't real. And it was satanic. It, there's, there's no doubt in my mind. And it was satanic. Um, uh, about two months before I left, uh, he came up the stairs and again, a little bit triggering. So just be aware, but he, he was in the basement and I was sleeping and he came up and he wanted, he wanted sex. And I said, no, I wasn't mean. I just was tired. I said, no, cause he used to tell me when I could sleep, when I couldn't. I mean, it was, it was bad. And we're not going to focus on that here. I mean, it was awful. It's a lifetime movie. It was awful, but he got on top of me and he started choking me and screaming in my face and uh, told me that he hated me. He hated my family and F you, F you. And he spit on me and then he forced himself on me. And, um, I remember, see, and I, and I put this in the back of my head. I, um, this came out a couple months later. You, 
God gives us some defense mechanisms when we are in fright or, or what is it? Flight or f- fright. I forget what it is, Light, but fr- um, yeah. Um, fright or freeze. Yeah. We shut down and, and I couldn't even, that came out in therapy that, that just came out a couple, a, a while later. But um, uh, I'm, I'm just, just a minute. I, I just need to just hang on a second. I got to, cause I want to tell the story accurately. Um, I remember when it came out in therapy that the Holy Spirit put on my heart that Satan, that he, okay, we, we don't, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and things of the sky that are evil. And he wanted to snuff out my light and my life. And, um, God said, no. And God literally rescued me. And I, you know, I know that's really dramatic, but that's, that's part of my story. That's part of what happened. Mm -hmm. I should have called, you know, the authorities. I didn't, um, during this time he was, he was counseling with our pastor because I asked him to go and he was telling our pastor, um, lies that I was a raging alcoholic. I was a, a, a drug addict and, um, uh, I didn't know any of this till after I filed for divorce. I didn't know because he would tell me he was getting help and he loved me and, and he's so sorry. And, you know, it, it, it just, it was all about power and control. So let's, 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 pa- I want to, I want to stop talking about that just because it, it, it's, you know, I know that you're, you're uh, flying free sisterhood. A lot of these women, it didn't turn physical. Mine just happened to turn physical. Well, and um, I want to point, I want, I want to actually, I mean, I'm glad you said that. Cause I want to point out that even though you may be listening and you're thinking, oh, my situation isn't as bad as that. So maybe this doesn't apply to me. It absolutely applies to you. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. I think you would say Lisa, that the, the psychological abuse and the fear and the, um, the betrayal, what is something that that's what you ha- you know, the, the bleeding behind your ears and the, I'm sure the headaches and the other things that you do, the physical things, those things have gone away. It's a psychological trauma that you went through that I'm guessing you had to heal from when it was all over. Well, and that's okay. Thank you for bringing up. That is what led up to the physical. It didn't start physical because I never would have stayed. But once he had me hooked, then he could escalate. And he obviously has severe issues. I know that now. But the, and I've said that the physical part, I healed quickly, the mental, emotional, spiritual, whoa, that I was in therapy for 18 months. And, um, that was another thing that the, the, the leadership at the church told me all the answers are in the Bible and I didn't need therapy. And that's where they're so blind and they're so deaf to trauma and what that looks like. Um, it's a whole different animal and people just don't want to, they don't care. They don't want to be involved, you know, in that kind of thing. And Natalie, yes, please. I I, want to make that. I have a couple ladies right now that I do talk to and they are not being physically abused, but they are definitely in danger. They truly are. And they need to make that decision just as I had to make that decision. But um, I went to Bible study uh, last week and a, a, an older guy came up to me afterwards because I, we were talking, uh, you know, about scripture. And one of the verses that, that the Lord has really unpacked for me during the last couple of years is perfect love casts out fear. And I was, I was telling them about how the Lord's perfect love uh, cast out fear in my own life and also fear of the backlash that I did get from people in the church. I still, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a persona, not non grata. You know, I'm, I don't touch me because it might rub off on you. No problem. It's okay. But, you know, he said to me, he's in his seventies or eighties and he's been married 64 years. And he said, um, you know, my wife always said, if I just hit her one time, she would leave. And I, I his name's David. And I said, David, it's not that simple when you're in deep with somebody like that and you are told that you know you made this vow and 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 you know that you may not no matter what you must keep it or you're less of a christian or less of, of a believer or jesus won't love you as much i said you don't understand what you would do in that situation and he looked at me like kind of weird and what i'm learning is that unless you've been through it 
don't try to explain it unless that person wants to hear. And then the Holy Spirit will tell me to tell my story. But you know what? I don't waste my breath. I, I just don't anymore. And I used to, I want to tell everybody the pain and please run, run, run. I don't do that anymore. You know, um, people aren't always that. ready to hear that kind of, that's, mm-hmm. those are treasures. Your story and the, sto- the stories of the women who are listening to this right now, you have been given, have been entrusted with a treasure that's bought at a very heavy price. It's and it, it's a pearl. And to give that pearl to someone who's just going to trample over it is not, that's why God says, don't throw your pearls to swine. He's not, he's not saying that other people are swine. He's saying that in the same way that a pig is going to take that pearl and just like a pig's not going to value that. Mm. So in, 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 in the same way, some people are not going to value the story that God's entrusted you with. And I'm excited because this actually ties into something that I know you're going to talk about later on, how God had told you, like God had told you that you were going to have this ministry to women. And, you know, this is even before you were even married to this really nasty person. So yes. I, I don't know if you're ready to dive into that part of it or not, but. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, let's lighten it a little bit because that, that's heavy stuff. Um, and that actually, you know, that PTSD, the CPTSD, like I'm sweaty right now. I'm a little shaky, but see, yeah. I know God's got my back. I know he loves me. I know that he protected me. He spared my life. And, and so, um, yeah, this is exciting. So when I was married to, to Joe, the, the, my first husband, um, and the father of my children, um, you know, I just, I, what he was, a, he was a good man. He overcame a lot. The Lord helped him overcome a lot because he was severely abused as a child. He really was. And he could have abused me, but he chose not to. Well, Anyways. and that's, that's another thing I want to bring out. I'm sorry. I, I just want Go people to understand because sometimes women will say, well, my husband had this bad childhood and so I need to help him. I need to rescue him. I need to be there for him. Um, I can yeah. understand why he's abusive. No, no, no. That is no excuse for not getting therapy, for not healing, for not getting help, for not being a better person and making better choices. So if your husband is not doing that, that's his responsibility and you are not to be his rescuer. You can have compassion on him that he had a bad childhood, but that does not give anybody the free reign to treat other human beings in, in horrible, abusive ways. Yes, Natalie. Uh, so glad that you said that. Okay, first of all, we ladies, we are very gifted. God's given us. I mean, we were created as a helpmate to our husband, which means we, you know, we, we're a little deeper than they are. And just, I'm paraphrasing, please. I know I'm not technical, but God gave us a lot of gifts. We're very bright and smart and resilient, and we, you know, we have that sixth sense. We just, I don't know, we see the world. It's much more colorful for us than for a, for a, a man. I think that's my opinion. But anyways. Both of my husbands had fathers that were in the Vietnam War, multiple uh, tours of duty, came back. They were alcoholics. They got beat up. They both of them physically beat up and, and lots of bad stuff. My first husband never touched me. It was a choice. My second husband beat me. So you're correct. It, it is It is definitely a choice. And ladies, and I'm talking to myself to quit trying to play God. It yeah. got me into a lot of trouble. There are consequences for what that man did to me, period. There just are. Yeah. And I withheld those consequences because I loved him, because I loved him. And I suffered, but God spared my life. Literally, Natalie, God spared my life. I know I don't have time to tell you I did it, but it's pretty amazing how how the Lord loves me. He loves us so much. He spared me, but I I did. I withheld consequences and I don't ever want to do that because I, I almost died. And I need to tell you another story, just very, very interesting. So some of the leadership at my former church, um, the one The one fellow was raised by a dad who was a severe alcoholic and abused the kids and sexually molested the girls. Okay. The, uh, he passed away and then the, his wife passed away recently. She was older, I think eighties. And this man got up and praised her for keeping the family together. And my 
I, I just, I, I could, I actually had heard this. I didn't go to the funeral, but it made me sick to think that those girls could have avoided that abuse and those boys could have avoided the physical part, but they were staunch Catholics and you don't leave your marriage. You stay married. So she was quote unquote, a godly woman. And I just, that message, and I'm trying to remain calm because I get very excited. And like you said, so much has been revealed and I'm still trying to process and saying, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? You know, even if it's one-on-one, but that it's not okay. And so those girls, and I know, I know them, they are so, there's just a lot of issues there that could have maybe been avoided or prevented. So just, I'm not telling people to leave uh, that, that, that is never like, yeah, go out there and, you know, leave, get divorced. That's not what I'm saying. Ask God, get away from the situation. Ask the Holy spirit, ask one or two people that you trust and do what God lays on your heart. And I've got to tell you, my divorce saved my life financially, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and sexually protects me to this day. I am not cursed that I filed for divorce. That was another thing I filed. So I was the sinner. And do you understand the double standard there? I mean, it's so blatantly obvious now, but I I still, I do attend church. I didn't for a long time. So I can relate to that. And I thought I was sinning, but I wasn't. That's a whole other story. But I attend church, and if I even get a hint, a hint of man-made tradition or judgment or legalism, man-made rules, I'm out. I I have no time for man-made crap anymore. I just know that Jesus loves me, Jesus rescued me, and he can rescue others with the same grace and the same comfort and protection that he poured down onto me. He wants me to share that with others, to tell others who he is and what he's capable of. And, And it was really, really hard to go through this. I went through this pretty much by myself. My kids, because they were grown and they knew me, they stuck by me. They, and they're still, they're, they're amazing children. And they've gone through a lot since their dad died. You know, what I, what I went through did not help, but anyways, they have been through so much, but you know, that, that as a result, so I, I got, I don't know if I said this, Natalie, cause we weren't recording and I told you this, but before I married my, my second husband who was an abuse, is an abuser, unless he's changed. Um, and they rarely change, by the way. But before I married him, I inquired of the Lord, and the Lord told me he was a gift. And I want to make it really clear that what he did to me was not a gift. It was his choice to do the things he did to, did to me mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, all those physical things. His choice to do that. But what I have learned as a result of it, that's the pearl. That's of great treasure. And I cannot keep my mouth shut. We talked about this. I can, I was in the pit and it was dark and it was nasty and slimy and ugly. And I cannot go on my way and pretend it didn't happen. I must go back and and get in if I have to and pull others out because, (laughs) because that's what we're called to do. That's, that is what I'm sorry, what I'm called to do. I don't know what your story is. That's my story. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, I feel very passionately about what you do and it is, I know it's grown a lot and yes, I've been a member and I will continue to be a member, but Natalie, get your seatbelt on because God is doing a work in people's hearts and lives. And I think that he's going to open some eyes and ears with all that's going on in our world. I didn't bring that up, but all that's going on. Oh, and let me, let me, can I, I just want to interject this, this coronavirus COVID-19, I am a registered nurse. I, and anyway, so I, I really keep track of what's going on. I keep abreast of what's going on, but I got to tell you, okay. Um, what I went through with the ex, much worse than this. I'm not kidding. That it is, it is. I can't explain to you what it's done, but I am a warrior, and I did not know that. I did not know how loved I was. I did not know that God is for me until everybody left. And when I cried for help, man couldn't help me. The church couldn't help me. They couldn't with a little C. They didn't want to. They didn't want to get messy. They didn't want that. But see, Jesus did. And that's why I say I will, I will never be the same. And the same um, religious, uh, whatever you want to call it, man-made tradition that I raised my kids with, thank God, 
like God took the blinders off my eyes and has taken the blinders off their eyes because they saw what these people did to me, people that they grew up with. And they're like, I can't believe they weren't there for you. And um, it reminds me of the scripture that says, you know, God is a husband to the widows and a father to the orphans. Now I used to take that so black and white and think, well, only if you're a widow, no, no, no. You look at that. It's God is a husband to the husbandless. He is a father to the fatherless. And God says, what I want is a broken and contrite spirit. And what is true religion to me is taking care of orphans and widows, which is the marginalized, the least of these. Yes. Why as as the church with a capital C, are we not taking care of women and children? Why are we allowing the wolves and sheep's clothing in the church to literally wreak havoc and and rip the sheep to shreds. And I was told he's a new Christian. You need to be more quiet, you know, tone it down, give him more sex. Oh, I was told that. And, and do you know what happened when I continue to lose my personality and be more and more subservient, the abuse escalated to, to things that it was not compatible with my life. I don't know how much longer I would have had. I will tell you this. I wouldn't be here right now doing this podcast had I not left. And I know that I'm positive. Yep. If you would have obeyed your spiritual mommies and daddies, you would be dead. Absolutely. There's, there's so much ignorance there. It's just, it's, uh, it's uh, what, what I think blows me away. What makes your story so interesting is that it was the same church that just, that I, it's hard for me to wrap my brain around They're They're loving and supportive of you as long as you, and you had a great first marriage. It wasn't even this, you know, I'm the head of the home. I'm the head honcho and you're the subservient woman. It wasn't even modeled after that. It was modeled after mutual love and mutual respect. And yet then you get into a relationship that is, I'm the head honcho and I'm going to beat you into subservience. There, the church is like, oh yeah, you know what? You, that's, that's good. Like you stay in that marriage. I mean, maybe it's not good, but you know, nothing we well, can do about that. Right. Or, or, you know, you made a vow, so you better not, you know, you better not break it. And, and I just, again, it blows my mind because somebody had said to me, had the pastors, there were two pastors at the time, had they, had they witnessed what he was doing to me, especially physically, I think they would have like thrown him outside and called the cops. But because it was his word against mine, um, you know, oh, oh, and let me, let me back up. I served, you know, I served the Lord through this church for, I, I'm pretty sure 30 years. Um, and I, I was, um, you know, in leadership roles. I, I do love Jesus. Jesus loves me since I was four years old. And, um, it was shocking to me. I used to, I still write, I write a weekly devotion. It's called Lisa's Lisa's jars of joy.com. And well, it's, but it's Lisa's jars of joy. And my, my church would sponsor me and I still write them. And because I went through that, they, and I said, would, can I, I will sponsor, but can I put your name at the bottom? Cause it was an advertisement to attend our church. Can I put your name at the bottom? So people, cause I know you're preaching the word and they said, no, thank you. And that, I mean, that hurt so bad because I was, and, and so I, I was bawling and I called my daughter and she, she's an amazing warrior. She is, she's, she's an introvert like her dad and she's just amazing. And my son is wonder. My son's amazing too. But anyways, um, I called her crying and she goes, mom, they better quit reading the new Testament because look at Paul. Don't read Romans acts. Don't do not read the Psalms because David, he was a murderer and an adulterer. Oh my God. Quit reading the Bible. You know, who are you? You are a sinner. You shouldn't be writing about what God did. You know I mean? She was what a wise sorry. girl. What a wise Whoa, girl. She's amazing. And Natalie, I got to tell you, she's in school um, to get her master's uh, and eventually doctorate. And at, he, she's going to uh, go to counseling and she's specializing in trauma in, in, in a small part because of what I went through. She'd never yeah. seen that side of me. And she was like, mom, that's not right. You know, that's not right. So it, it's really cool that's what God is doing. There's the gifts. There's the gifts coming. Yeah. Yep. Um, before this podcast, and then I do want to talk about River Ledge because I, you know, uh, it, anyways, before this podcast, I, my, I have a granddaughter who's going to be three. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're not a grandparent yet. I can't wait till you are. It is, it is amazing. Yeah. When she comes in, she has her, she's in a princess phase, you know, princess dress. And 
she comes in and she has not said this to me before ever. And it was right before the podcast. I was, you know, doing my makeup, my hair, and I have a little pretty purple blouse on, you know, and my earrings. I know it's podcast, but anyways, <laughs> and she goes and she calls me Gigi, Gigi, Gigi. Um, you're a queen and I'm the princess. And, Aww. and I thought God, cause the Lord told me that too, during this, he said, Lisa, you're my daughter. You are, I love you so much. Do you not understand who you are in me? Do you not understand who you are? You are da- a daughter of the King. That's who we are. Yes. And I know that for sure. Not, I didn't know it then, but anyways, back to, you know, I, we'll get back on track. Um, so I want to, I want to give you a visual and then can we, you know, we'll, I would like to talk a little bit about River Ledge and what yeah. the Lord did. But um, I had, a, I had a, a vision. Uh, I've, I've had lots of different things happen while, since this has happened. Just, um, I was told that, the, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to me like that. And all these, I mean, those are all lies. I know that now. It was from the evil one. Now remember, our fight is not against flesh and blood. And I know we're angry at the people that hurt us. But really, Satan's trying to destroy us. He does not want us to achieve our full potential as human beings who happen to be female here. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, so, it's you know, that's what he's, what? So anyways, um, I love the beach. And when I was a little girl, we always went to the beach. And, um, you know, I would have on, you know, when you get, when a wave comes and hits you, you fall down and you get sand in your, you know, your bottoms. Okay. What happened to me with my abuser and his family was abusive, by the way, it's not just one person. It was, they put so much crap out in the community about me, um, which God's defending my name. It's a whole other name, a whole other, I, I, the stories I tell you may ch- give you chills, but anyways, cause I never said a word. God said he'd defend me and he has, and will continue. But anyways, um, when the abuser came along and, and I fell in love with him, uh, that was like getting hit with a wave and the, you know, like a little girl and I got hit and I, I fell down, but I got back up. But the second wave was massive. And that was my whole, um, that was my church family. That was religion. That was man-made tradition. When I was rejected by those that I had literally, when the doors were open, I was there. I led women's retreats, you know, I would just all those things. When I was rejected by them, when it knocked me down, I almost didn't get back up. I swallowed so much salt water and I had so much sand in my bottoms. I couldn't get up. I almost drowned. But you know what? Jesus rescued me from that too and said, I got to teach you something, daughter. Trust me, Lisa, I love you. Do you trust me? Let's go. I want to show you some things about how people get it wrong and quit putting people in an institute or I'm sorry, man, I, I always followed the rules, you know, followed whatever man told me, especially the preacher, especially the people in authority. I always put them, you know, above God, really. They got knocked off and Jesus and God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He is on the throne of my heart. I listen to Him, period, because I don't want to go through the pain that I just went through, you know, if that makes sense. So I hope I explained that that okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, I love that. I love that's going to mean so much to so many women. Is this content resonating with you? I've written a book for women of faith and destructive relationships called Is It Me? Making Sense of Your Confusing Marriage. A Christian Woman's Guide to Hidden Emotional and Spiritual Abuse. You can read reviews and find out more about my book on Amazon.com. It comes in paperback, Kindle, and Audible formats. And new for 2020, I've created a companion workbook for Is It Me? also available on Amazon. This workbook is like 11 power-packed therapy sessions to help you process through the important material you'll be learning from my book. These books are recommended by counselors and therapists all over the United States. I've also got a website specifically focused on helping women of faith find hope and healing. It's called flyingfreenow.com. I'll even give you the first chapter of my book and the first chapter of my companion workbook for free when you hop on my mailing list at the top of my website. Those two resources are going to help you figure out if your relationship is normal or destructive. And now... Let's get back to our episode. So can, can we talk about River Ledge? <laughs> Let's talk about River Ledge. And you know what? I also, I mean, it's, it's great timing because you're actually 
hosting, do, do we have, are all the spots filled? Or are there still some yeah. spots open? It's it, Pricing has been an issue. And I know that um, I did it the best that I could, but yet we have eight out of 12. So okay. eight out of 12. And if only eight come, that's who God draws to River Ledge. And if 12 come, that's who God draws to River Ledge. So, okay. Um, but, but this is going to go out before that whole thing is over. Okay. So let's, um, you yeah. guys, she's have she's going to tell us about River Ledge, but there are four spots open and you can register. You, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that after you're done telling us about your farm, um, cool. and how you started it. And we would love to have you come and spend time with both Lisa and I are going to be there and eight other, eight other women besides us or besides us. We're going to be yeah. having a healing retreat on, I think it's May 1st to the third. Correct. Correct. In Correct. Vermont. Yep. And I'm going to be there. Even if the COVID-19 is still raging, I am flying out there. Come hell or high water. I mean, I'll have to be in the hospital or I'll, otherwise I will be there. Yeah. That, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first time that I sounded the alarm uh, that something was really, really, really wrong with my marriage. And it was back in 2000, the end of 2015. Um, uh, one of the things that I needed to do was to flee because, um, he, you know, he's, he's not wired right. And I'm, you know, that's his story to tell if he ever gets it right with the Lord, but there's something very, you know, very sick, uh, about him and the way his behavior. So I needed to get out of town, get out of Dodge. And I come from a very small community in Pennsylvania and my daughter married a man from new England. So I asked to take refuge up there. Um, I had asked um, somebody close to me, and, and this person is still very close to me, but again, indoctrinated, ingrained with religion, if I could uh, come stay with them if he got physical. And I was told no, because, you know, they were in leadership at the church and, and uh, what would other people think? And then maybe God would punish them because uh, they were encouraging divorce. I mean, it's just, it was sick. Anyway, so I let, and, and, and by the way, this person, her eyes are open, wide open. She's one of my dearest friends. So, you know, God does work with us and has apologized and, and she's been, she's my, she's, she's one of my best friends. So, uh, has seen the whole thing develop and has never given up on me. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Um, so I went to Vermont and because I was married at, at 19, met Joe at 14. Um, and then right after he passed away five months later, I got into another relationship. I have never been alone. I didn't know what that looked like, like alone, mm -hmm. um, as an adult. And so when I was up in Vermont staying, finding refuge with my daughter and son-in-law, um, and he trying to heal, uh, they went away for a romantic weekend and I took their dog. It was my grand dog at the time, Russell. And it was the first weekend of my life. It was the first time in my life that I've ever been alone. I'm not kidding. And it was just me and the Lord. And I got in the car with Russell and, um, there was, I was in the, in the middle of nowhere. And, um, I just was so sure of God's love for me and his protection over me that I just, you know, went in the car and went and had an adventure by myself. You don't understand this. Like I always had to have somebody around me all the time because I'm, I'm, I love people. I, I love, you know, I do, but I needed to be alone. So me and the Lord, we took the ride <laughs> and, um, I got lost and I got really, really lost. And, um, it was, it was, uh, it was, I think it was in March. It was before Easter. So really it was 2016. Anyways, I got lost and the dog was panting. Russell was panting. Well, I guess I had the dog with me, so I wasn't technically alone, but I had the dog and the Lord was with me. And there was a brook, uh, like a, we call it Crick, but up there they call Brook. And it was, you know, it was kind of high. And I thought, why well, I, I need a drink and I know my dog needs a drink. So I got out and, um, um, uh, you know, it, the water was look crystal clear. I drank it. The dog drank it. And across the street was this, this, uh, farm and it was absolutely magnificent. And I looked and it had a, a for sale sign and, and I looked at it and I thought, boy, that's beautiful, but I could never afford that. And I, and I got in the car and left 
And um, uh, there's so much more that I could tell you, but I don't have time. But anyway, so I got lost. I'm still really lost. And you know how you go in circles. About an hour later, I come back past the farm, the opposite direction. And I and we were thirsty. You again. really were lost. Good we were out in the booties. I'm telling you, and I couldn't get a phone signal, so I didn't have GPS. But I knew the Lord would get me where I needed to go. I really did. That's my faith was growing by leaps and bounds. And anyways, I didn't need a man to complete me or anybody to complete me. So anyways, I was it was okay. I was, I was alone. Got out and there was a brochure and I grabbed it and I looked at it and it was very expensive and I thought hmm, why is this? And I looked at what was there and it was just huge. And I brought it home and I started praying and I felt the Lord, you know, say, Lisa, I want you to, you know, look at this. And, and I'm like, what? Like, you know, that I'm in an abusive relationship and that I'm not well in my head. <laughs> you know, I, the way I used, you know, it, it was just really interesting. So I came up with a list of 10, um, things, questions that I needed to ask if I was going to put an offer on this farm, which I, anyway, so um, all 10 answers were, were a yes. And then on Easter Sunday, um, something happened during the worship service that was just insane. And I put a bid in on the farm and um, I got the farm. And it, it's a long story, but anyways, um, it's a huge project before I purchased it. And, and the way that God got the mortgage together and how he put everything together is a story that I may share when we're, we're all at River Ledge. But um, I stepped out in faith. And I remember the day that I met the realtor to do a final walkthrough. I, I was scared. My stomach was a little sick. I was scared. I'm telling you. And I was sitting out there and I opened up the scripture and I opened up to Samuel where it talks about um, David and how he defeated Goliath. And I sensed the Holy Spirit say, um, Lisa, this is, this farm is a giant. And I know you don't understand you know, how you're going to do it. But I'm telling you that I went before you and I've got it all figured out. And your job is to trust me and just keep taking the next step. And I'm going to show you things you've never seen before. And, um, that is exactly what he's been doing. Um, I've been up there almost four years now, the healing that is there. And I'm, and I know the Holy spirit and God resides in us, but it's a special place. That farm is a very special place. And I have a feeling, and again, I told you, Natalie, Natalie earlier, that unless uh, the Lord builds a house, they that build it do it in vain. And um, I think God has a very special plan for this place uh, related specifically to women that have uh, gotten out of a, a, a domestic uh, situation, you know, domestic violence and not just physical other ways. And I believe that he's going to do a lot of healing there. And I'm stepping out in faith and I know where to walk by faith, not by sight. I know it sounds crazy, but if I, when I get a chance and hopefully I'll be able to share this sometime, what God has done in and through river ledge, I can tell you story after story of him showing up. It is, it, it just blows my mind. That's the father that I serve. That's the father that a lot of us ladies serve and uh, he has a purpose and a plan and he doesn't want anything to get us off track. And, and my second marriage got me off track. It, it almost destroyed me. But as a result of that, God opened my eyes that evil is real. I was very naive, very naive. I was one of those women, ladies that you would have like probably, bleh, you know, cute because I was like, oh, well, you shouldn't get divorced, blah, 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 blah. You know, like, you, blah, blah, blah. uh-uh, complete 180 in my life because I actually lived it. I get it now. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, God's going to do, he's not done. He's just starting, going to do some really amazing things. So I'm Natalie, you know, I'm excited. And I, I would like to see a, a, a huge network for women worldwide, because we don't, we still, there's a lot of pieces that aren't together yet, but I would like because I really had to dig to find you. And I really had to, like, I know where to seek, ask and knock. And, and that's for salvation, but it's also in life. You know, God 
promised this life and that life more abundantly. And when I was with the ex, I remember being in my closet and weeping and, and hiding and saying, God, this is not abundant life. Like you're either a liar or I'm getting something wrong. I, I something's wrong here. You know, I've served you my whole life and you've allowed this. And I, I just didn't get it. You know, I didn't get it, but, um, uh, I'd like to see uh, that you can, I know there's the domestic violence, uh, what is it, the shelter, and you can call and all that kind of stuff, but I would like to see something more formal and, and, and money that goes into it and education, and especially in the church, Natalie, especially in the church with the capital C, that they would op- open their eyes and start ministering and that the church would be the safest place for somebody that, that is in that kind of situation instead of the least safe place. Because as of today, it is, it is the least safe place. There's no way I would, I got my best counseling, unfortunately, which just blows my mind, but God showed up in people that weren't even Christians. They weren't even Christians. And I found healing and that blew my mind of who I thought God was to see God owns it all. Whether you're a believer or not, he's in charge and he loves it. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Well, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to the, um, the place where you can go if you're interested in joining us in May. And um, we should have you come back again and talk more about River Ledge and maybe some of your, we can talk about our time together. And because I, I think, I think, yeah, right now you're doing a lot of wedding you know, weddings. Is that correct? That, yes, yeah. I'm doing weddings. Um, I, my heart is with retreats and conferences and, and um, uh, we'll see how the Lord takes care of that. But I do need to pay the bills and, um, yeah. and that's okay. Cause that's part of business and that's, exactly. that's not a bad thing. And you know, there's uh, people that, that help me out. And, you know, one of them is a, is, is a mom who's in a really bad situation. So God, he works in really mysterious ways, his wonders to behold. And, um, I'm just excited to see how he's going to grow it. And if the Lord puts it on your heart that you should go, go trust him. He'll, he'll make a way. And, um, if, if not, that's okay too. Cause who's supposed to be there will be there. You know how that's how God works. Yep. Um, and I also want to say if, if anybody is having some financial hardship and, um, please, please let me know, shoot me an email. I'll see what I can do. Cause I do have people that, um, have a heart for this as well. And, um, you know, just, we're just ready to help if, if that, if it comes to that, that makes sense. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time, Lisa. And for just for, I think this was an excellent episode and I think it's really, really going to be cause some breakthroughs for a lot of women. It just mm-hmm. light bulbs, I think are going to go off and your story is just very relatable and you have some very unique, situ- you've unique, things that you brought to the table that will really help people, I think, unsnag some of those things that are keeping them stuck. So I appreciate your time. And thank you. And- Natalie. You keep up the good work, please. You were a lifesaver. You, you truly were. I was, I think, I don't know if this recorded, but I was so traumatized and your material was life saving. It saved my brain. I got to tell you in my heart, God used you in a well, very yeah. powerful way to get back on my feet. It's the truth. That's awesome. I think there are, there is a growing band of women that are rising up and they are doing exactly what you described. They are getting out of abuse and they are the ones on the front lines, reaching down into the pit and rescuing other people. The church is not doing it, but God is doing it through these survivors. And that, I think it's a beautiful, amazing, incredible thing. I'm super excited to be part of it. So for the rest of you guys, thank you so much for listening and fly free.